Good morning, good morning. It's Rach here, an award-winning award writer with, you've guessed it, the awards people sitting on the sofa of success here at the Queen Victoria Arts Club in the heart of Leicester in the cultural quarter. Thanks to Cassie and Julie for hosting us yet again. I've got one of the busiest men I've ever met on the sofa finally. I can, I will. <laughs> was his book, I went, right, if he can, I will, I'm going to can and will, get him on the darn sofa. This is Mark, and I'm going to get Mark to introduce himself to you right now. Mark, over to you. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Right, firstly, thanks for having me, Rachel. Pleasure. Um, so, um, as you said, my name is Mark Eshel. I set up uh, my first um, company in 2000, Easy Internet Services. Good grief. So we were, we were actually one of the first digital marketing agencies in the UK. <laughs> And then in 2004, I set up Easy Internet Solutions, again, being one of the first to offer free web hosting in the UK. So now we host over 100,000 websites. Free web hosting. Free web hosting. So there's basically no holds barred. Um, you can actually get on there. All you need to do is actually buy a domain name. And um, we, uh, we've partnered with Weebly, which is very similar to Wix. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, a domain will cost you ten pounds. You get your free hosting, and from there you can create a website. It's wow. as simple as that. Business enabling, love it. Uh, well, well, it's it's uh, it's a loss leading model, which works great. But you know, obviously, there's a caveat to that in terms of we we limit the number of visitors to the website, mm -hmm. but we still got people. We, we've been going now for fourteen years. We still got people that still host with us for free. Good they they haven't paid us one penny. And then my third company is a property investment company, which is a small property investment company that I set up two years ago. And that's me. So you had plenty of time to do that and write the book. So when yes, did you indeed. squeeze the book in? Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I squeezed the book in uh, in 2000. I started in 2017 and then finally finished it in 2018. So 2018 was a very, very busy year for me. So even, even now, it's actually still a busy year. And launched it here, I think, and, in I, I, and I, Yes, I, I, exactly. I had I, I two book, book launches. I had uh, one at the Queen Victoria Arts Centre. Actually, this, my book launch was actually the very first event I, that I they ever had it. here. So, yes, it was absolutely brilliant. So thanks, to, thanks uh, to Cassie for that. And then my second book launch was in London at the Rotary International Headquarters. Wow. So that was, um, yeah, that was that a, a phenomenal event. Pants, wasn't it, it? it was very, very fancy, <laughs> yeah. But it, it was great. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, is there a reason why you held that one down in, in the Rotary's International? Uh, that was a good, good question. I'm actually a member of Rotary. Oh. Uh, I joined Rotary about two, three years. Actually, you introduced me to Rotary. Yes, you did, Rachel. Did. You well, did, you did. Bonnet, that's it. <laughs> that's right. Bonnet. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so I joined Rotary about three years ago. And subsequently, upon joining Rotary, it's a bit embarrassing to say this, I didn't realise the impact that they had had on eradicating polio. And polio is something that's quite close to your heart. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> I suffered from polio when I was the age of five. I was actually, I was actually paralyzed from the neck down initially. Gosh. And um, so, yeah, so, um, so obviously after writing the book, um, um, members of, the, um, of Road Church actually found out about the story and then invited me to have the book launch in London and it was all, it was all done for free. Also, Gosh. by the way, the book launch here was free, was free as well. It, it was actually donated by Cassie. <laughs> so it's your winning I'll, smile, that's I, what I, does it, Mark. I think it's gotta be, has not it? <laughs> <laughs> So tell us a little bit about the book, and I want to talk sure. about the book because actually a lot of yeah. the themes that are in the book are themes that you mm. have pulled out into the award entries that indeed have been written for you slash we That's have right. written for you. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the book. Why mm. you've, you've touched on obviously yes. the polio at age five, yes. <clears throat> paralysed from the neck downwards mm -hmm. at age five. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the story. So how, uh, what, what happened between then and now? <laughs> uh, right, okay. So my parents came to Leicester in the 60s and they actually, they actually uh, sorry, they came from Nigeria, not Leicester, <laughs> and they settled, they actually settled down in Leicester and I was actually born in Highfields. Oh, uh, a lot of people think I was born in Nigeria, but I was not. <laughs> and, and, um, and because they were students, they were poor students and working at the time, I was, um, uh, they found me a private fostering family 
and that fostering families in Newbold Verdon, which is on the outskirts of Leicester. So to cut a long story short, in between them, my parents thought I had the, va the vaccine. My fostering family thought uh, my parents had given me the vaccine, so I kind of slipped through the net. Mm. So, um, so one day, um, <clears throat> when I was about five, woke up in the middle of the night, I walked to the toilet, uh, got back into bed, had a very violent fit, and I uh, blacked out. And the next day, I found myself in hospital completely paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. So I was essentially a talking head. And I was told that my chances um, of uh, basically survival of actually coming, obviously actually, um, of survivors that was just about 10%. They said I would actually never, never walk again, ever, because it's gonna be impossible, because I had a very severe bout of polio. Um, one saving grace that I didn't, uh, because sometimes when you get it that bad, it can affect your lungs. Mm. So therefore you have to have like a breathing, well, it's actually called an iron lung. Iron lung yes. uh, exactly, you know, I know, it's a scary thing. So I was lucky that I didn't need that. Uh, but in, t in two years time, I was actually, uh, my upper body had come back. Uh, most of my upper body had come back. Uh, and so then I was then, uh, by the time I was eight, I was walking with two calipers and two crutches. And um, yeah, so why most, most kids were out playing, <laughs> I, was at, I was at Leicester Royal Infirmary actually trying to recover. I, I know it's just one of those things. <laughs> I'm quite lucky. That's life. <laughs> was a phrase you did hear Mark just say. <laughs> at the age of five, six, seven. I mean, well, well, well a lot of people say a lot of people say that. But why do I, you know, why do I find myself? Well, why do I think I'm lucky? Because it could be, you know, it could have been worse, Rachel. Mm. It could have been that I would have been paralysed on the neck down for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I've actually recovered to where I am now, I actually think I've been a bit lucky in that respect. Can you imagine and obviously, not driving your fabulous car. <laughs> exactly, my, my my wonderful car and my wonderful scooter, <laughs> which I wish I had a picture of. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We'll yeah, you have to pick it up onto the screen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why not? <laughs> so, <clears throat> how going from that the age of seven, eight, yeah, recovering, yes, going through school, <clears throat> education. What did you want to be when you grew up then? Um, I wanted um, I wanted to be a DJ, but my parents obviously won't allow me. Because <laughs> I really like this. I wanted to be a DJ, but my parents wanted me to push me into accountancy more than anything else. Uh, but growing up, um, I grew up in Nigeria. Uh, so when I was about eight, I had to go to Nigeria because my because what happened was after my partial recovery, I was actually put in a special needs school. Oh wow! Okay. So my parents then found out that I was in a special needs school and then decided to come and get me. So I was then obviously then, as I said, um, taken to Nigeria. So that's why I was there for about 10 years. Gosh. And that's why I did my initial schooling. Mm -hmm. And then uni yeah. afterwards? Or uh, yeah, well, what, what happened was, um, my situation in Nigeria kind of went from bad to worse. Because I thought, okay, being disabled is going to be the extent of my problems. But I had a very abusive father as well, who could not accept my disability. So at schools, I'd go through bullying. I'd go for a very aggressive dad. But so um, and um, yeah, so I had a very very strict um, upbringing. So when I came back to the UK, I actually came back to Leicester, and um, <laughs> uh, which I actually didn't like then. This is like years ago. So, you know, it's like, but Leicester then wasn't as multicultural as it is no. now. Yeah. And um, so uh, I didn't last very long in Leicester, so I went then to London. But what happened was, because I'd actually had a very, very kind of restricted childhood, all I did was then party and go out all the time. So, so my teenage years, um, so I then become a bit, as, for want of a better word, a bit dysfunctional, because I was just going out all the time. So as a result, I, w I was going from one college to another. <laughs> three months there, three months there, <laughs> drop out, go back again, drop out, go back again. But I did, I did, uh, but also as well, there was, there was another reason for it as well. A lot of these institutions, as they are now, weren't very accessible for disabled people. Mm. So for me, you, you know, there's steps everywhere. Mm. Uh, always having to find a way to actually get into the lecture, in, into lectures and stuff like that. Now it's a lot more easy. It's, it's a breeze now. Uh, but I did... Um, finish I did get a master's degree from De Montfort University Wow! yes so that's my educational journey and then <clears> what was yeah. it was it easy as a disabled man to find work I mean obviously uh, you run your own businesses what, what was no, the story? no 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 it, um, it, it 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 was quite hard 
um, because a again, you think, okay, equipped with these qualifications that um, someone, you, you know, that you obviously that someone's going to give you a job. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, being a black and disabled person um, was quite a significant barrier. So I was doing like um, dead end jobs. And um, it's not till, gosh, almost um, till that years later that someone finally gave me a chance and I was actually um, given a job as a finance manager at a charity. And to be quite honest, if, if I knew I knew now, because now I know that 22% of uh, employers actually uh, want to employ disabled people because they think they're crap, 67% of the population have got a disability bias. And I think to myself, okay, did I just waste all, all, all that time trying to educate myself, knowing that I'm not going to get a job afterwards in terms of trying to get a master's degree? Probably I should just stay at degree level. I just, <clears> well, <throat> I think partly sometimes you do these things because mm. you want, if you yeah, do you, them you because do. you want to do them, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, but if you do them with a dream, then, oh yeah. It, it, a, well, well, I did it with a dream, hope, uh, hope, hoping that I'll become employable. Yeah. And obviously that would then help me level the playing field, but unfortunately it didn't. Now those stats, are <coughs> they from today or were they from a few oh, years from, ago? When um, you they're, 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 they're from a couple of years ago. So uh, there's, still, there's still that? Uh, uh, absolutely, the 22%. Is the word prejudice, I suppose it is? Would be, it, it is, it is prejudice, it is discrimination, you're absolutely right. Uh, so those stats were from 2017, late 2017. Okay, so uh, having gone to uh, traditional uh, working, you set yeah. up your own businesses. Yeah. What's your story? I mean, you've got three mm. businesses now. Mm. Successful, I presume. I yes. mean, obviously, yeah, yeah, they are very successful businesses. Um, my, my, my journey into business was, was, uh, wasn't um, a conventional route. Uh, Why does that not surprise <laughs> <me>? <laughs> It's just a story of my life, isn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I um, so I was in this job, I was happy, I was settled in the job. And then unfortunately, I started to suffer from the late effects of polio. I, I started becoming ill. Oh, uh, the oh. doctors uh, did, obviously didn't, we, didn't know what was wrong with me. It took me, it took six months for me to get diagnosed. So essentially oh, what happens with polio is 70 to 80% of polio sufferers um, get revisited by polio again. And it just kind of kicks you in the nuts once more, one more time. And what it does, it gives you like Parkinson's, Parkinson's type symptoms. Uh, chronic fatigue is a big one. Uh, muscle ache. So as a result, I actually had to leave my job. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't fired. I need to stress that. I actually left um, uh, under my steam, that sort of thing. And um, so then I was then thinking to myself, okay, should I get a part-time job with a council? Because I needed flexible hours. And, um, but then the internet was a hobby. Because a lot of people think that, that I did computer science and stuff like that. Actually, no, I, I knew nothing about web design or digital marketing when I started. <laughs> Basically, everything I've learned is all self-taught. Wow. So I taught myself a bit of um, web design. Mm -hmm. And uh, I then decided, okay, that you know, I wanted to do something different. So I came up with the with idea to create a website very similar to Rightmove. So I actually did Rightmove before everyone else. And it was to offer uh, free property advertising online. And um, I put all my savings into it. I had a student help me create the database. I pitched it, it was actually called house, houses-online.com. Pitched it to the Leicester Mercury, who thought it was actually fantastic. They thought it was actually brilliant. Uh, but two weeks later, so sorry, we can't really help you on this one because obviously it's gonna, you know, it's, it's gonna uh, compromise our relationship with the estate agents. So um, yeah, so I, I went into, into a situation whereby I was not only obviously couldn't actually, to a certain extent, unemployable, uh, but I was also broke as well. So I basically put all our, all our money, <laughs> my dear wife, bless her, <laughs> put all our money into this business that failed. Uh, so then I started to look for ways in which to market it, and that's when I uh, came across SEO. Ah, and the rest, as they say, is history. You became one of the first UK companies to start offering that service out. Absolutely, that's correct. And entirely self-taught. Uh, in, completely self-taught. Wow. Yeah. Right, so now you are an employer, mm. do you follow the same biases as 60-something uh, percent? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no. I've actually, 
I, I'm actually, we, 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 we're actually more uh, of a positive discrimination employer. <laughs> we, we, we actually go out there and seek disabled people to employ. Because you've and, been <clears throat> signed up to the government initiative. Yeah, which is the Disability Confidence Campaign. So in 2013, I met with um, David Cameron. I was, I was actually one of three uh, disabled entrepreneurs that he invited to, um, to, to the event. And then since then, I've been uh, quite active in terms of talking to employers and trying to encourage them to employ more disabled people. So that's something I do. I've done it with MPs and I, I work a lot with the, with the DWP. And I think also yeah. you've done some speaking with Institute of Directors, Federation of Small Businesses. A absolutely, yeah. The, the, the chambers. The chambers, exactly. That sort of thing I'd, I'd like to do going forward because mm. I'm very passionate about dispelling some of these myths about disabled people because there's lots of myths about disabled people out there. And, um, and that's something I'm very passionate about. So how do you mm. make it work then when seemingly other businesses don't? Well, we're quite, a, 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 again, to make it work, don't quite well, know. Well, well, we like to, you know, we like to kind of think outside the box. Uh, we've um, been remote working for the last eight years. Mm. Uh, so we used to have a team in the Philippines. We've had a team in India, of course, for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we know what it's like to work remotely. So gradually, over the years, we've, most of our staff actually now work from home. The, although they're in the UK, we've got people in Leicester that work from home. They only come into the office once or twice, like I do. I tend to work from home a lot. So what, to, up to, and, and again, the, the option to work from home does attract a lot of disabled people because like, for instance, we've got a web developer who's highly, highly talented. And I found him on one of these freelance um, websites and um, he hasn't worked a proper job for three years. And, um, and I said, but, but, you know, but, but why not? He, he said, B because I've, he's got Asperger's and he's, um, he's anxious about going out to interviews. And he doesn't, actually apparently he doesn't really like, he doesn't like going out. Um, he now works for us. I've got many examples like that in terms of how we basically look at people's skills, look, looked at people's talents, yeah. and then use those talents and, um, yeah, and, and essentially just giving them a job. That's what we do. So, friends, you might be wondering why we're talking so much about it. You might not, actually, because Mark's story is <laughs> fascinating. The reason I wanted to hear Mark's story again and to talk about, and obviously you can find out a lot more, it's just giving you the, the highlights, the lowlights, the, the lights yeah. uh, of it, but you can read about it in his book, available from Amazon, etc. Yeah. Uh, must get you to sign mine. Okay, um, sure. I don't know why, I just, <laughs> just collect signatures. <laughs> I won't be using it for fraudulent purposes, honestly. Not. Um, <laughs> but the reason I wanted the, Mark to share the story, one is because it's an incredible story, um, and talk about you know adversity too. You know, he's, a, he's a very modest, but he's a very successful businessman. Um, and I think you started up your business, wasn't it, on a credit card? Because uh, I did. Say you'd, uh, absolutely. You spent the money on the spent, uh, fabulous yeah. idea that then became indeed or right move then. But that's right. Yes, indeed. <sighs> <laughs> That's why. Must be as poor as the, the man who sat there looking at the bottled water thinking, I thought about that years ago. <laughs> but the reason I asked Mark to tell a little bit about the story is because some of the awards that Mark has been nominated mm. for have been around not only his entrepreneurship, but about the, the work that you've done for mm. uh, the community, um, the disabled community, yes. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Mm. But a lot of them have been about pushing that agenda forward Absolutely. because it's not something that we've fixed yet, is it? No, not at all. It's actually very low on the priority list. And, um, and I'm fortunate that there are not that many vocal disabled entrepreneurs out there. So mm. I'm probably just one of the handful that's obviously trying to push that agenda. And also, it's, it's a lot of it, it's, it's just about creating awareness. Mm. Mm. You know, and that's what it's about, is that when people actually start to un understand some of the issues, then they're a lot more amenable to do something about it. So when we sat mm. down and we were talking about awards plans and what type yes. of awards you wanted to enter, it yes. was very much the brief was I want to enter awards mm. that that have a credibility about them that can help to push this message forward. That's, that's correct, yes. To yes. open some doors, to yes. be able to take the message further that there are ways of being, yeah, if mm. we look at this whole part of our society, yes. that a vast majority are being um, excluded from the workplace, mm. and yet at the same time we look, mm. I think it was Insider Magazine at the end of last year, we're right. talking about the, the three main issues that were affecting uh, businesses across the Midlands. Yes. And it wasn't Brexit, it wasn't about government legislation, it's productivity, Indeed. recruitment and retention. Yeah, and yeah, yet we right. have people sitting at home. Absolutely. 
but we're keeping yeah i've got um, possibly with master's degrees more experience than you can shake a stick at. that's true yes but no one would give them a chance and i think that's be and, and, and you know and that's part of that's part of the issue I'd, I'd, i've got a friend of mine that i used to play basketball with and he hasn't had his job in about 18 years and he's a very intelligent and articulate gentleman but but no one would give him a chance Wow, I think we're missing out, project. friends. Well, well I, I think so as well. But, but again, when you, when you think about it, these people are on benefits. So <laughs> and who's paying the benefits? Mm. We, the taxpayers, actually. You know, so you know, it, it, it has got a direct impact on the taxes we pay. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just get more disabled people into work and then we can pay less taxes. Happy oh. days. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I love the sound of that, Mark, I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> So what, a, what <coughs> auto we uh, entered just recently? Well, the Institute of Directors was one, wasn't it? That's We're still correct. waiting on that okay. with fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, we get that one, yes. Yeah, yeah, so there was a couple uh, yeah. entered in there. You entered one, um, well, obviously, the Director of the Year Awards, it is for the Director of Business. So both of them were, were entered from Mark's point of view. But one of them we were talking about more about the community activities Indeed. wider, because you mentioned your wife earlier. But yes. I, I don't know how you have the time to do it by either of you, but she set up her own initiative as well. That's correct. That your businesses support. That, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah we support. Um, she set up an initiative about three years ago whereby she's sending recycled bras to, um, to Africa. So she sends them to Gambia, she sends them to, um, to uh, Kenya as well. It's called the Your Smalls Appeal. Your Smalls Appeal, that's right. <laughs> and you donate office space to her, so you are surrounded. <laughs> we're, we're, we're surrounded by bras in the office. <laughs> yeah. Happy days. Anybody who goes to Mark's office will think very suspect of the not really, not really. The old box. It's and the old box. They hidden. But you do you do an awful lot, you know, speaking, raising awareness for disabled mm. rights, uh, the issues around employment. I mean, I heard you speak just recently at a at a Blaby. Um, oh yes, yes, business yeah, yeah. That was um, part of the county part of, of Leicestershire. Leicestershire, that's correct. Yeah, and that was amazing. And the yeah, gentleman from DMU was also yes. uh, a wheelchair user. He was a wheelchair user, user as well. So, yeah, it was, just, it, 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 it was quite unique to be in an event whereby you got two wheelchair well, users I have to be honest, actually talking on the, at the same event. I have to be honest, <laughs> we really today in days, day, today's mm. day and age, we really shouldn't be kind of going. Oh my goodness, this is who. <laughs> I did, I sat there going, oh, it's Mark here, and there's, oh, no. I forget like, the gentleman's name, I want to uh, say Andrew, uh, but I really uh, can't remember. I can't remember his name Sorry. either. So. Uh, but a lovely, lovely chat, yeah. and he was all about getting students into um, into employment, um, and to get experience mm. while still at university. That's correct. Uh, but a fabulous chap. He really was, he was, he was indeed. But I think that's, that speaks volumes, doesn't it, when we say, in today's day and age, we're still mm. noticing that there's people <laughs> who are disabled, I know. or in wheelchairs. <laughs> It's a rarity, isn't it? it, it, be, it it's, it? It's the same thing. Like if you look back, like twenty years ago, you didn't see that many black people on TV, did you? <laughs> think I about it. Not, <laughs> exactly. I'm to think <laughs> exactly. But 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 yeah. things change, and you know, and actually things evolved. And interesting. What 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 I find very very interesting is the younger generation. They're a lot more accepting, and I and it's almost like they don't see the disability. They see the person first. Shouldn't you? Does, uh, does yeah, really I, I know, I, I, absolutely. You, well, I have right. got into trouble with saying this, but I'm going to say it again. Go on. I really don't care with your male, female, black, white, mm. Jewish, Muslim, abled, disabled. Yeah. You know, nice to me, nice back. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Now, That's that, doesn't, to be. that doesn't mean I don't appreciate that some people come from cultures that have been horribly oppressed and I'm not mm. being insensitive to that. But at the same time, we choose to either live in the past or we can live in the present. Absolutely. And, you know, let, let's just get on. Let's yeah. just get on. Let's I, I tell agree. fabulous stories. There's some yeah. great, great inspiration. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you can do what you do and achieved what you have achieved, frankly, having a big deck of cards stacked against you, yeah, I'm black, right. disabled, indeed, yeah, you know, crikey, uh, absolutely, and, and and that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book as well mm. because uh, again, it, it was to show people what is possible. Yeah. Because when you look at it, you said the odds were stacked against me. What were my chances of success? You'll probably say like one in a hundred. What was your chance but of survival, mate? Or survival. Yeah. <laughs> that is just my survival. But um, yeah, but when you look at it, is that if you look at look at it from a, a statistical point of view, the odds were, you know, my chances of actually being successful, successful in business were very, very low. Yeah. And that's one of the messages that I'm putting out there. I've also got my own YouTube channel that I've just started recently. Just look, look, look me up on YouTube. 
too, but Marquez Show, ESHO, <laughs> you know, well, I'm no, going to plug that. Absolutely, well, we'll get your logo at the end, we'll get your contact okay. details, okay, we can excellent. put the YouTube link yeah, on there, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. people connecting uh, with yeah, you. Yeah, but, but again, it's, it's about, it's, that, it's about, um, uh, spreading that message but it's not just black or disabled people it's basically to anyone who's actually going through challenges in their life mm. anyone's just going through any sort of adversity because mm. because at the end of the day we, we all face challenges don't we and and sometimes it affects some people more than others mm -hmm. d d doesn't it so, so it's, it's, it's actually spreading that um, positive message oh, mark thank you so I much learn. good luck with the iod thank you the year awards Fingers that crossed. would be yeah awesome that would be great um and let's get writing some more and get, get telling the story the Super. book i can yeah, i yeah. will amazon um we'll flash up mark's details his logo his contact details at the end and his youtube channel um Frankly, he's a fabulous guy who'll inspire and motivate. If you want to book him to speak, then you can also get a hold of him from the contact details at the end. Before I let you go, sure. just had a little signal from my camera <laughs> with that. I nearly let you go without asking the three I wonder what was questions. that? Was what's no, I was just so involved in, in this. Um, so, yes, the top three stories. Now, <coughs> you are an award winner already, so yes. you don't need to imagine too hard. Mm. But, but you're at an awards ceremony, yes. you're sitting at your table, your category is being announced, mm. and they say Mark Esho is the winner. Mm. Do you bear hug or high five your table mates as a celebration? Um, high five. High five. Yeah. You go up to the t uh, up to the stage. Yes. Do you go on your own or do you take your team with you? I tend to go on my own. <laughs> Good. Yes. It, no, it right, depends right, if right. the team's with me. Well, but. that's true. <laughs> They're all hard at work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I'm at the bar and I say, Mark, I'm buying the drinks. Is it champagne or prosecco to celebrate? Oh, definitely champagne. Good man. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> that I have stacked today's audience with champagne drinkers, but... Goes to show. There you go, Pamela. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's still going, whatever, back in. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sitting on the sofa for success. No, thanks Good for having me. Good luck with the book. Thank you. Um, and with the Institute of Directors Awards, we'll be talking to you very soon, I think. Again, Hopefully. Mark will give us an update on what's been happening. But uh, until we see you next week, take care, have a great week, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.